All right, welcome everyone to uh, the, uh, the tutorial session during the hackathon for the pajama design system. Uh, I'll just, uh, in, uh, there are a number of people we have from, from the UX team and uh, I'll turn things over to you, Sam, and uh, you can introduce yourself and the rest of the folks and we can get started. I think you have a slide to share as well. So. I do, thank you, Ray. Yeah. Uh, one second, let me just share my screen. Um, where are we? Oh, spoilers. Uh, right. Okay. So, uh, today we're here to talk about, uh, on component migration efforts. This is kind of a, a joint effort, um, between the, the UX and the engineering teams. Um, so this, this is, this is quite a big effort. It's, it's a big effort with lots of small amounts of work. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we're doing this so that we can get the community involved and get as many people involved in this as possible, because it, it's a big task and we take all the help we can get. So everyone can contribute, right? So, um, I'm Sam Beckham. I'm a front end engineering manager here at GitLab. Uh, you can reach me at Sam D Beckham on GitLab, on Twitter, on basically anywhere. Um, GitLab and Twitter are probably the more useful ones though. Uh, and I'm joined today by Jeremy Elder. Um, I'll, I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, uh, thanks for, for joining and putting this together. So Jeremy Elder, Senior Product Designer at GitLab. I'm on the front end and UX Foundations team, helping with uh, working through some of our design system with pajamas and GitLab UI. And so happy to be here, happy to have uh, this migration effort. And we'll walk through what that is and uh, jump right in. We're hoping to have enough time for questions and a demo. So. I'll uh, let you take it from here, Sam. And it looks like Jarek's on too, right? So glad you're able to join us. And if you want to you know, quickly say hi, that you're more than welcome to. Yeah, hey Ray, how's it going? Uh, yeah. My name is Jarek Ostrowski, and I'm on the UX Front End Foundations team as a uh, product designer, and been helping out with the migration effort. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what you put together. Cool. So, uh, very quickly, just a little bit about what, what we're doing. Um, as I said earlier, this is kind of a, a joint effort with, with UX and engineering. Um, so we, we, we want to increase, increase adoption of our design systems. So that's pajamas, that's design.gitlab.com. So this is the, the sort of UX side of things. This is where we do component usage guidelines, component code guidelines, things like that. Um, and we're helping to do this by increasing adoption of our component library, which is GitLab UI. Um, and, and what that is, that's a series of components that are built using the design system. So the theory is, uh, if we increase adoption of GitLab UI, we increase adoption of our design system. Uh, and the, the two things kind of go uh, hand in hand there. And, and as a lovely side effect from this, we get to remove Bootstrap from, from GitLab. So Bootstrap is great at doing exactly what the name suggests, and that is bootstrapping something. Um, we're now at a stage where we have our own component library and design system, so Bootstrap's uh, becoming less and less uh, useful for us. So we're, we're trying to move away from that and, and all of the other uh, bits and pieces that we have and, and bring them in uh, to use our component library and our design system and things. So that, that's, in a nutshell, what this, this effort's about. Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, again, there's a design, there's an engineering side. Um, I'll, I'll let, let Jeremy talk about the, the design side of things and then I'll, I'll go over the engineering. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks Sam. So from a design standpoint, uh, we, we've got some really key points here. First, it's just single source of truth. So right now having, uh, you know, as Sam alluded to Bootstrap and in GitLab and, and also it's still talking in a minute, it's also part of GitLab UI. Uh, th there's kind of two sources of the truth. And so we're always having competing uh, differences between production and the design system. So this will provide uh, and promote a single source of truth from a design standpoint, uh, an overarching design ph uh, philosophy that'll allow us to just have one kind of methodology and approach makes it easier for the design team and UX to, uh, to kind of tackle problems in a, in a succinct way. The component library, keeping that robust and having that, you know, back to the first point, single source of truth, keeping it clean, and uh, as, as Sam will speak to, kind of a, a drier code base, also drier from design too, so we're not repeating ourselves and, and tripping over things. 
Uh, accessibility is a big part of this. So as we introduce new components, we're evaluating them for accessibility. That includes you know, color or contrast, interaction states, uh, you know, ARIA, some of the, the content behind the content. And from a design standpoint, we're allowed, they're allowed, we're, we're able to kind of capture all of that into a single thought and, and help promote that. Uh, and lastly, just to avoid uh, visual regression. So with that single source of truth, we can really allow ourselves to be streamlined and, and have uh, just clear design communication and assets to point back to. Yeah, the, the engineering side of it, as, as Jeremy pointed to there, it's very similar. Um, we want to avoid code reuse uh, and, sorry, we want to increase code reuse and, and have a drier code base so we can have one component that we develop and then use that all over the place so that when that component changes, it changes all over the place. When we need to update things, uh, we can update it once. When we need to fix a bug or something, we can fix it in one place. And, and it helps us build things a lot quicker as well. We can just throw in, um, you know, like the GitLab button, the GitLab modal, whatever it is we need. And, and it, it, it helps us move a lot quicker with building features as well. Um, one kind of nice side effect of this is we have less third party dependencies. So where we're previously using uh, Bootstrap's obviously one of them, there's things like DropLab and, and, and all sorts of ones where uh, they're like JavaScript framework, not frameworks, sorry, um, plugins that help us do things, we can start moving away from them and, and using our own um, GitLab UI ones so that we don't have all of this weird mismatch thing, which, you know, it, GitLab is is a relatively large code base now. We're starting to get a few things like this, so we're trying to move away from them and, and, and move towards GitLab UI. Uh, as a result of removing these, uh, we get some smaller bundle sizes, and as a result of that, we ship less code to the user, so we get some performance gains as well. And, and this is something that every engineer uh, enjoys doing. And, and if we can do it at the same time as, as you know, these, these UX improvements as well, and then the design uh, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like coherence, I guess, then it's great. We, we, we're all happy. Um, so, there is one kind of caveat to the removing bootstrap side of things. Like this is kind of the underlying thing for, for engineering is removing bootstrap. Uh, if we move to GitLab UI, we can remove the bootstrap dependency from, uh, from GitLab itself. Um, and removing that should allow us to start removing jQuery as well. So we're, we're getting rid of two fairly large dependencies at once from, from GitLab itself. And, and the bundles and things that we ship to our users. Uh, the one small caveat, as you can kind of see in this diagram, is GitLab UI has a dependency on Bootstrap itself. So we're not completely getting rid of Bootstrap. It's still kind of there in the dependency tree and things, um, but we're avoiding having uh, Bootstrap included in, in two places. And, and we do get some you know, uh, performance benefits and, and things from that. So th this, this is kind of the, the ultimate goal when everything's moved over, we can totally remove that, that dependency and, and, and start seeing some of these benefits. Um, so this is some of the things from GitLab UI that we're trying uh, to move from Bootstrap. So these are things that exist in Bootstrap that we're trying to take and move over to GitLab UI. We have alerts, pagination, popovers, tooltips, buttons, dropdowns, tabs, and modals. Uh, and we have uh, different epics and things set up to track each of these. And, and this is what we're asking for help with really. Um, so taking what we've got currently and just moving everything over to the, to the GitLab UI version. Uh, we have created about 1,000 issues so far. Um, so like I say, we, we need help with these. There's a lot of issues. Uh, these are spread across two epics. Uh, there's the Haml migration epic. So this is migrating uh, all of the things from our Rails side of the code base and the Haml templates and everything, things that use Bootstrap classes and, and Bootstrap JavaScript and things and, and moving them to the equivalent GitLab UI uh, classes. Uh, and then there's the view one, which is exactly the same, but with view. Um, and it's it's a little different in that we can just use the view components because GitLab UI is a, a view component library. Each of these epics have inside them um, their own 
sub epics that track each component. And then each of them sub epics have inside all of the issues and each individual issue is one particular file or one particular instance of where this is. So it might be change the alert on the, I don't know, the, the branch page or something like that. Uh, and if you dig into these, you'll, you'll see what that is. Um, so in, in GitLab UI, this is an example of an alert that we have there. And you can see we can look at the source, the HTML. Um, if we look at the source, this is the view version of it. So this is how you would um, change it out to be the GitLab UI uh, component in a view app. Uh, you can see this particular example is pretty simple. Um, it's just wrapping it inside that GL alert. And then for the Haml, it's, it's a little more complicated. Um, you can click on HTML to kind of see the HTML that builds up this component. And there's, there's some helpers and things in places, but this is generally uh, how we're having to do it on the Haml side for now. Um, sometimes it might make more sense to migrate whatever it is in Haml to a view app so that we have um, the ability to just use GitLab UI generally. But this is kind of our, our fallback that lets us remove Bootstrap, um, essentially. So for, for where we're at now, I'm gonna hand over to Jeremy to talk over these, these lovely charts. Yeah, thanks. So I'll, I'll go through these relatively quick, but just uh, kind of anecdotal uh, charts here for the migration broken down into kind of different components. As you can see here uh, for view buttons and pagination, uh, we've had a decent burn down where we're roughly you know closed 56% of, of all the issues. You can see that uh, we still definitely need a lot of help with bootstrap buttons and uh, like loading buttons. Uh, could use could use some help as well. So uh, let's see. I'll jump over to the next slide. All right. So the the second KR is to uh, migrate the drop downs, modals, tabs. You can see this is one where we're we're pretty much at zero percent. So there's a lot of a lot of room here. A lot of issues to be picked up to help kind of migrate these as well. And then the last one for our KR is the popovers and tooltips. So you can see we're we're roughly over at one percent. So you know part of the the hackathon and this effort is to really help us bring down those you know thousand issues that that Sam alluded to. And uh, so we've we've had like a really good effort around button so far. But the the other components could really benefit from uh, from some quick wins and jumping in. Uh, so next slide. So how to contribute, you know, everyone can contribute and there's, there's two ways to really jump in and start. The first is to review the two parent epics. So one for view, the view migration and then the other for Haml. And under the view migration, there are links to each KR and those contain links to the sub epics that have all of the issues that you can choose from. And you'll be able to tell which ones have been closed and assigned. If you if you need any help following, uh, you know, finding those, we'll, we'll have resources at the end as far as how to contact us. The other is Haml, and you can view the links to sub epics that are actually in that link there. So I encourage you to to take a look at those. And most of the, the issues contain small chunks of work that are, are really great for first time contributors. So if you want to to jump in and contribute to GitLab, this is a, a really great way to do it. Great way to to meet folks on the team as well as work through uh, some really diverse areas of the product. So uh, with that, I turn it over to you, Sam. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, so this, this one's a bit of a question for Ray. Do we have 10 minutes to go through a quick demo to show how quick these things are to pick up? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it would be great. Uh, I mean, we got like 15 minutes left on the call, but even if we were to go over, I think this is uh, completely worth it and mm -hmm. uh, be good reference. So. Okay. So hopefully this will take us down to 999 issues, right? Uh, we all know the song about bottles on the wall. Um, so I'm going to go back to the Hamel migration epic and just open that and go from there. Let me just move this zoom thing out of the way so I can actually change tabs. Um, here we are. So yeah, you can see in here, um, we've, we've split it up. This is the, the main epic that tracks everything. I've split it up into uh, different components. So alerts, pagination, buttons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's some FAQs and things down there. Um, but then if we go into alerts, 
this is a sub epic that has 58 issues. Um, and each one of these is a file where we want to actually move something. Um, if I, here's one I assigned to myself earlier. Um, so in each of these, there's uh, basically the same description because we're basically doing the same thing for every single one, right? So uh, it, the title tells you where to look. Uh, so this is the file we need to replace the instance in. There's some instructions to say, you know, here's, here's what we want you to do. There's a class name mapping guide. Um, so this maps all of the bootstrap classes to the uh, GitLab UI classes. Uh, and then there's a little caveat here for dismissible alerts, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute. Um, so the instructions, take a screenshot before, uh, replace each instance of the alert classes, make sure it, I need to change the wording on this actually. So this says, make sure it looks the same as it did. If it looks the same as it did, we've not done the right thing. It needs to look the same as uh, it should in GitLab UI and in the design system. Um, take after screenshots to show that, you know, it, it's, it's looking like it should. And then open an MR with your changes, being sure to include both the screenshots. So it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so this particular one, is in app views project branches new. So if I go, this is my local environment. If I go into a project and repository branches, uh, new branch, uh, it's, it's on this page. Um, it's not showing up right now, so we probably have to trigger something. So if I open that file, let me just copy this and oh, window. Um, here we are, here's the page. Yeah, here's the alert. So if error, so we need to trigger an error to see this alert. So if I go back here and say a branch with It doesn't matter, right? Branch with spaces. And then we should, yeah, there we go. This is, so this is the alert that we're trying to change. Um, so I'll take a quick screenshot of that, just so we can see. I'm gonna, I don't know if I got my own face in that screenshot or not, we'll see what Zoom does. Um, okay, so yeah, this is what we wanna change and we wanna change it to the GitLab UI alert here so it wants to be uh not a warning but a danger one so th this is what we're trying to change it to um so i've done that uh, i want to replace each instance of the classes using the map so what classes do we have we have alert and alert danger they map to gl alert and gl alert danger so nice and easy to change alert and GL alert danger. Now this should get us most of the way. If I just refresh that. Yeah, there we go. So we're, we're most of the way, but um, as you can see, this is not ideal just yet. This is not right and we're missing uh, an icon here. So we need to do a little more. Uh, if I jump back into the issue, um, there is a thing about dismissible alerts. Uh, so this is slightly different to what we have now. I can just copy this though and put it in here. Just sort out this white space because it's Hamel and white space matters. That. So this should, in theory, that should fix our cross. There we go, we've got the right cross in there now. Um, we are still, yeah, we're still missing this. So this is where I would dig in to GitLab UI and just go into HTML here and look at what we're missing. So we don't actually have um, this icon part here. So uh, I know this is written um, as actual SVG stuff, but we have a helper for that in our Rails app and we're using it for the close icon here. So 
can just copy that and put that up there. And then we have these two extra classes here. So GL alert icon and alert icon no title. I'm gonna go ahead and add them in here to the CSS class thing. We should, uh, it'll be the wrong icon because I've not changed the icon, but that should show up on the right side with the right color. It does, fantastic. Um, what icon do we want? Uh, it's not the information icon, that's for this one. It's this icon here, which I believe, I think it's the error icon. I go to GitLab SVGs. Here is GitLab SVGs. Uh, is it this one? Yes, it's this one. Um, I think it's error. Is that the right one? Yeah, it's error. So all we need to do is where we've asked for the close icon here, ask for the error icon. And that should that looks right to me. Uh, what, what, what do you think, Jeremy? Does this pass you extra view? I believe it does. The only question I would have is uh, margin top on that below the breadcrumbs, and I'd, I'd have to look into that to know if that was part of the uh, component or the breadcrumb. Uh, and then I think you're still on your master branch, but that's. I am still on the master branch. That's right. Um, yeah. So I will take a screenshot of that. So I don't know the answer to the uh, margin question. So we'll put it in the MR and we, we can take it from there. I would agree. Um, yeah. So if I get rid of that, let me just grab the issue ID from there. And do uh, B um, uh, branch page. Push that up. I mean, you don't need to watch me create a merge request, I guess, but this is the point, like in, in 10 minutes we've, we've done, and this is one of the harder ones because this is one of the hammer ones, right? We've, we've not got the benefits of all the loveliness that uh, the view just gives us out of the box. If this was a view one, we'd literally just be changing the name of the component, right? Um, and, uh, Oh, we're in dark mode. Um, but yeah, so we would just include them two screenshots inside the screenshots here. And they should be on desktop. Um, so there's our before and after screenshot. I don't know which one's which. I've got them the wrong way around. Yeah. After, um, I'm not going to fully submit this because I'll need to go through and, and fill out all this information and stuff and no one wants to watch me type all that. Um, but yeah, at this point, I would then submit it and, and assign it to the, you know, the, the relevant people for review um, and make sure that, you know, I've gone through all of these uh, conformity and things that we have for GitLab General um, and, and, and go from there. And then that'll automatically close that issue as well. Um, when, when it all goes through. So, you know, you can see one of the harder, the harder ones with it being the hammer one, it, it's took what, 10 minutes and, and we've got one done. There's a lot of these, um, but they're all pretty small. So, you know, if, if you're looking for something to, to pick up, that's relatively quick and you want to get a contribution into GitLab, these are a, a great way to do it. Um, check out, uh, 
you know, both, both of the epics that we, we have here. Um, and, and yeah, uh, there's some contributing tips here. Um, I don't know if you want to go over these, Jeremy. I think you wrote these out. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, the first thing is just read the migration tips and troubleshooting help in the epics. A lot of those have steps and, and errors that, that many of us have encountered while we're going through, whether that's updating spec tests or, uh, you know, other, you know, pipeline issues that are related to these changes. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of troubleshooting help in there, as well as just examples of, you know, if you're migrating one type of button to another, you know, what elements to change, what are available properties. Uh, second thing is to follow discussions and solutions in the issues and merge requests. There's, there's a lot of help that's already kind of laid out. Uh, a lot of ground's already been covered in, in some of these. And so it's just a good reference point. Uh, and then lastly, just ping the right people. We're, we're uh, totally willing and available to help. So you can reach out to someone on the front end and UX Foundations team. Uh, I can uh, update that slide to have the, the address. But if you go to basically to the GitLab team page, uh, at about.gitlab.com slash team, you should be able to search for the department for front end and UX foundations and reach out to any of us. Jerick's on there, myself, Tori, who was not able to join it. And, uh, and then also you can find Sam and uh, reach out to him as well from the Hamill side of things. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's about all we have today. Um, as, as Jeremy said, if you have any questions, if you need help going through things, then, you know, reach out to, to his team or myself or a lot of people at GitLab can probably help you out as well. Um, you know, I don't want to say reach out to anyone because I don't want to speak for everyone, but, uh, we're a pretty helpful bunch. Um, so yeah, uh, happy contributing. Awesome. I mean, this is perfect. Thanks. And I appreciate the demo. Uh, I mean, there are a couple of like community members that I was thinking of that are uh, pretty interested in a lot of front end side of things. I mean, one person's in Asia Pacific regions, like in the wee hours and the other person's in uh, Eastern Africa. So I'll, once the video is posted on our YouTube channel, I'll make sure that I send the link over to them. So Hopefully, uh, I mean, one of those persons in Indonesia, he's been contributing during hackathon. So just, I'll, I'll try to make sure that this uh, is something that he takes a look at. Um, and hopefully we'll see more MRs. Yeah, yeah thanks, Ray, appreciate that. And, and this is something that, you know, even if you're not particularly a front-end engineer, um, a lot of these things can be picked up, especially the view ones. There's quite detailed instructions in all of these issues as to how to do things. Um, some, some of the view ones are a little more detailed because uh, Tori's been doing them and she's much more detail oriented than I am, I think. Um, cool. But yeah, uh, no, yeah, and all the help we can get, we, we will absolutely take it. Cool. Awesome. Well, th thanks all for your time and uh, we'll see you around. Yeah, thanks. Great to see you around. Thanks. Thank you.